Greetings and welcome to the AMC Entertainment Holdings, Inc. annual shareholder meeting and webcast. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. It is now my pleasure to introduce Adam Aaron. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Will the meeting please come to order? I'm Adam Aaron, a director, the president, CEO, and chairman of the board of AMC Entertainment Holdings, Incorporated. Welcome to the 2023 annual meeting of our stockholders. An agenda outlining the order of business has been made available. The matters on which the stockholders will be voting today are, one, a certificate amendment to declassify the board of directors, two, elect directors, three, a certificate amendment to eliminate the prohibition against stockholder action by written consent, four, a certificate amendment to remove the limitation on stockholders' ability to call special meetings. Five, a certificate amendment to expand the exculpation provision to limit the liability of certain officers. Six, ratify the appointment of company's independent public accountants firm. Seven, approve on an advisory basis the compensation of the company's named executive officers as disclosed in the proxy statement. And eight, if necessary, to adjourn the meeting to permit further solicitation of proxies. I'd like to begin uh, this meeting by introducing our current board of directors. All of us are joining by, all of them are joining by phone remotely. They are T. Clark, Hawk Koch, Bill Later, Gary Locke, Kathy Paulus, Kerry Putnam, Tony Sage, and Adam Sussman, all are present for today's meeting. Kevin Connor, the Senior Vice President, General Counsel, and Secretary of the company will serve as Secretary of today's meeting. He has delivered an affidavit of computer share, the notice agent for the annual meeting, which states that on September 29, 2023, a notice of the meeting was mailed to all stockholders of record as of the close of business on September 25, 2023, the record date for the meeting. This affidavit will be filed with the minutes of this meeting. Mr. Connor will now discuss the procedures for transacting the business of this meeting. Kevin? Thank you, Adam. Good afternoon. The meeting will take place as described in the agenda. We have a quorum of stockholders present in person or via proxy to conduct business. When an item of business on the agenda is before the meeting for consideration, questions and comments should be limited to that item. If you wish to make a statement about any resolution pending on the floor, please raise your hand and be recognized. Once you are recognized, please approach the microphone, state your name and whether you are a stockholder or a proxy holder. If you are a proxy holder, please state the name of the stockholder that gave you the proxy. Please keep your statements brief and limited to the specific item up for discussion. We may have to interrupt any statement that continues for an unreasonable amount of time. Speakers will be limited to an absolute maximum of two minutes. You may not record the proceedings today and phones or other recording devices are not permitted in the meeting room. Anyone disrupting the lordly conduct of business or acting in a threatening manner toward AMC employees or fellow stockholders will be asked to leave the premises and, if necessary, escorted out by security personnel. If you have not already submitted your votes and would like to during the meeting, you may do so on the ballot provided to you at check-in. Ballots will be collected at the conclusion of the business items on the agenda. Any ballot not received when called for will not be counted. We will announce the preliminary results at the conclusion of the meeting. Final results will be published in an 8K filed with the SEC. Adam. Thank you, Kevin. The Board of Directors has appointed Eddie Gladback and Kelly Schemenauer, both vice presidents in our legal office, as inspectors of election for this meeting. They have signed an oath to act as inspectors of election, which will be filed with the minutes of the meeting. The inspectors have the registered stockholder list of the company as of the record date for determining stockholders eligible to vote at the meeting. Kevin has advised that a quorum is present, so I declare the meeting duly 
and lawfully convened. There is considerable interest in knowing how many shares have been voted at this meeting. The number of shares that voted prior to the meeting are approximately 101 million shares, which is about 51% of the 198 million 356,898 total outstanding shares. That number includes broker discretionary voting on certain items such as ratification of the auditors. For non-routine items on which brokers cannot submit discretionary votes without instructions from the beneficial holder, we only have about 20% participation. I would remind all of our shareholders that voting is an important opportunity for you to let your voice be heard. I encourage more of you to vote at future shareholder meetings to let your voices count. Proposal one, board declassification. The first item of business is an amendment to the company's certificate of incorporation to declassify our board of directors, shortening all existing terms to expire at this meeting and make certain other immaterial changes. The amendment along with the reasoning therefore is set forth in the proxy statement. This amendment has been reviewed by and is supported by companies nominating and corporate governance committee and its board of directors. A motion to approve the amendment is now in order. Ron Herman, a stockholder. I move that proposal one be approved to amend the company's third amended and restated certificate of incorporation as set forth in the proxy statement. Thank you, Ron. Is there a second? Adam? Is there, is there a second? Ms. Pierce seconded the motion. Thank you, uh, she was, Ms. Pierce was not in a microphone, so I couldn't hear her. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, are there any questions or comments on this motion? There being no further discussion, I hereby call the question and declare the polls open to vote on the motion. If you've not voted or if you wish to change your vote, please do so now by marking your ballot. I now declare the polls closed on this motion and we'll proceed with the agenda. Proposal two, election of directors. The next item of business is the election of directors. However, before proceeding, we will need to determine the outcome of the vote on proposal one. Kevin, please provide the preliminary outcome of the vote on proposal one. Thanks, Adam. Based on the proxies received prior to the meeting and the number of shares present at the meeting, Proposal one has not obtained the support of a majority of the company's outstanding stock and therefore has failed. Since proposal one has failed, mostly because of the, the amount of non-voting shares, we will proceed with proposal 2B to elect class three directors for a term ending at the 2026 annual meeting. As to close in the proxy statement, the candidates for director who've been nominated by the company's nominating and corporate governance committee and by its board of directors are Denise Clark and Carrie Putnam. In accordance with the company's bylaws, stockholders are required to provide advance notice of their intent to nominate candidates for director. No such notice was properly received and therefore no additional nominations can be accepted at this time. I declare the nominations for directors closed. A motion to elect the two nominees, D. Clark and Terry Putnam, is now in order. John Greiner, a stockholder. I move that the nominees be elected as directors to serve until the 2026 annual meeting of stockholders. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Debbie Weber, a stockholder, I second the motion. Thank you, Debbie. Are there any questions or comments on this motion? There being no further discussion, I hereby call the question and declare the polls open to vote on the motion. 
If you've not voted or if you wish to change your vote, please do so now by marking your ballot. I now declare the polls closed on this motion and we'll proceed with the agenda. Proposal three, stockholder written consent. The next item of business is an amendment of the company's certificate of incorporation to eliminate the prohibition against stockholders acting by written consent. The amendment, along with the reasoning therefore, is set forth in the proxy statement. This amendment has been reviewed by and is supported by the company's nominating and corporate governance committee and by its board of directors. A motion to approve the amendment is now in order. Chris Cox, stockholder, I move that proposal three be approved to amend the company's third amended and restated certificate of incorporation as set forth in the proxy statement. Thank you, Chris. Is there a second? Scott Falkenhayn, a stockholder, I second the motion. Thank you, Scott. Are there any questions or comments on this motion? There being no further discussion, I hereby call the question and declare the polls open to vote on the motion. If you've not voted or if you wish to change your vote, please do so now by marking your ballot. I now declare the polls closed on this motion and we'll proceed with the agenda proposal for stockholder special meetings. The next item of business is an amendment of the company's certificate of incorporation to remove the limitation on stockholders ability to call special meetings. The amendment along with the reasoning therefore is set forth in the proxy statement. This amendment has been reviewed by and is supported by the company's nominating and corporate governance committee and by its board of directors. A motion to approve the amendment is now in order. Cynthia Pierce, a stockholder. I move the proposal four be approved to amend the company's third amended and restated certificate of incorporation as set forth in the proxy statement. Thank you, Cynthia. Is there a second? Greg Vermillion, a stockholder. I second the motion. Thank you, Greg. Are there any comments or questions on this motion? There being no further discussion, I hereby call the question and declare the polls open to vote on the motion. If you've not voted or if you wish to change your vote, please do so now by marking your ballot. I now declare the polls closed on this motion and we'll proceed with the agenda. Proposal five, officer exculpation. The next item of business is an amendment of the company's certificate of incorporation to expand the exculpation provision to limit the liability of certain officers. The amendment, along with the reasoning therefore, is set forth in the proxy statement. This amendment has been reviewed by and supported by the company's nominating and corporate governance committee and by its board of directors. A motion to approve the amendment is now in order. Debbie Weber, a stockholder. I move that Proposal 5 be approved to amend the company's third amended and restated Certificate of Incorporation as set forth in the proxy statement. Thank you, Debbie. Is there a second? Chris Cox, a stockholder. I second the motion. Are there any? Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions or comments on this motion? Okay. Uh, we do have one question, Adam. Yes. My name is Susan Shelton. I'm a stockholder, and my question is whether or not the language that you purport to put in the revised Articles of Incorporation will have um, a stipulation that the uh, liability protection that this seeks to provide will be forward-looking only and not for any past actions. Um, thank, you. thank you. Before you respond, Kevin, Susan, thank you for being at the meeting in person, and thank you for your question. And to the answer, since it's pretty technical, Mr. Connor, do you want to respond to her question? Uh, we do not intend for the operation of the amendment to be prospective only. In other words, if a matter uh, for which we sought exculpation happened in the past, but the cause of action arose in the future, the exculpation would apply in a, for, in a, in a retroactive basis. Which, Susan, which may affect how you vote on the question. Are there any other questions about this motion? There being none, I now declare the polls closed on this motion 
and we'll proceed with the agenda. To proposal six, ratification of auditors. The next item of business is to ratify the appointment of Ernst & Young LLP as the company's independent public accounting firm for 2023 as discussed in the proxy statement. I'd like to recognize representatives from Ernst & Young who are joining us today. Would you please stand? Hello and welcome. Thank you for being with us in person. A motion to ratify the auditor appointment is now in order. Scott Falkenhayn is a stockholder. I move that the appointment of Ernst & Young LLP as the company's independent public accounting firm for 2023 be ratified. Thank you, Scott. Is there a second? Ron Herman, a stockholder. I second that motion. Are there any questions or comments on this motion? There being no further discussion, I hereby call the question and declare the polls open to vote on the motion. If you've not voted or if you wish to change your vote, please do so now by marking your ballot. I now declare the polls closed on this motion and we will proceed with the agenda to proposal seven, executive compensation. The next item of business is to approve the compensation of the committee's named executive officers. This proposal is a non-binding stockholder advisory vote. The company's executive compensation is discussed in the proxy statement. A motion to vote on the compensation of the named executive officers is now in order. Greg Vermillion, a stockholder. I move that the compensation of the company's named executive officers as disclosed in the proxy statement pursuant to SEC rules be approved. Thank you, Greg. Is there a second? John Greiner, stockholder, I second the motion. Are there any questions or comments on this motion? Kevin, we have a question. Yes, we have Susan. another question, Ann. Susan. I know, I know who it's from. I now, I, know, I now know Susan. I didn't know you could see me. Hi, how are you? Of course, thank you. Of course I can. <laughs> okay, my name it's is- like there, It's like I'm there in the room. It's the, the new modern way. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, yes, I am Susan Shelton, and I am a shareholder. And my question is, there was a lawsuit that was settled recently with uh, a group, a, a variety of different plaintiffs, and I think their cases were all consolidated. And part, I, I forgot the names of the people, so I apologize if this is not a very helpful question. But um, it's my understanding that a portion of that settlement required that um, an additional person or additional set of people be added to the compensation committee. And my question is whether or not that has already happened and what is the recommendation of the people that you added to the compensation committee from that lawsuit? Kevin, could you respond? You to I'll, I'll take that one, Adam. Thank you. Uh, you're referring to our stock drop case in which was settled and there were changes made to both our nominating and governance charter and our compensation charter. And yes, the, uh, the remedial measures we undertook with those changes have been affected and those, members of the board have been appointed. It was, it was one. And that member of the board is voting in favor of the compensation committee results. Sure. And Susan, I, might add, I'd like to I, might, I might, I might add Susan that the recommendations of the compensation committee were unanimous uh, on all, on all these matters. Okay. And I appreciate that. And I guess my, are you allowed to share with us what their recommendations were? Uh, the um, the compensation for calendar year 2022 uh, is disclosed in the proxy. And as for 2023, which is the year that we are in the middle of now, which will be reported on at year end, I can tell you that I've made prior public comments that my own compensation would be what I call red circled, which means that my salary would have no change my target bonus would have no change. My start target stock grant would have no change versus calendar year 22. How those uh, target, how those bonuses are paid and how the stock grants are made is a function of how well the company performs against its budget uh, consistent with the plan. And we won't actually know until the end of the year whether the, the bonus grant or the stock grant will be at target, below target, or above target. That's a provision of the plan 
which puts my compensation very much at risk with the company's actual performance. With respect to the other named executive officers, I recommended and the compensation committee approved for 2023. Uh, I, I don't want to say they approved it because all I want to do is repeat the public statements. I said publicly that I would recommend to the committee that, um, that none of the senior officers receive a salary increase, although their target stock grants uh, that might, might change. Um, uh, how, what the committee decided with respect to that recommendation, uh, as well as the recommendation to red circle all of my own pay, will be disclosed in the 2023 proxy, which comes out after year end. Okay, so just so I understand, um, you're capping your 2023 compensation at 2022 levels is the way I understand it. And you're, the portion that is tied to incentive to performance is any, any amount above that? Or would, you, would you're, those you're, results you're, you're, bring your compensation down? You're, 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 close, you're close to having it right. Okay, and thank it's you. Complicated. <laughs> so um, my salary is fixed. And again, not saying what the conversation committee did, but my recommendation was that there be no, no increase to the salary for 2023. With respect to the target bonus and the target stock grant, the actual stock grant and the actual cash bonus can go up or down, above or below the target based on the company's performance. So we set the target for 23 exactly as we set the target in 2022. In 2022, it's disclosed in the proxy materials, the company far exceeded its budget. So the actual cash bonus and the actual stock grant were much higher than target. How we will do this year depends on how we do this year. And this year, we're only, you know, we're 10 months of the way through, but we're not done. And uh, the company's performance against its budget uh, per the terms of the bonus plan and the equity plans will be determined at year end by, by the comp committee. Uh, and so I can't, as I sit here today, I can't tell you whether my compensation will go up, will stay the same, or will go down because much of my compensation uh, approximately 90% of it is not salary. It's tied to the performance of the company. I can tell you that my target compensation is much lower than my actual compensation for the past few years because we have, in fact, exceeded our budgets in the last several years. My target compensation is much lower, about a third lower than my actual compensation in the past several years. I don't know what my actual compensation will be this year until the year is over. I do know what my target compensation is, and the target compensation is the same as it was last year, unchanged. All right, I appreciate or at least that. Or at least that was my recommendation to the compensation committee at the beginning of the year, and we disclosed their deliberations at year end. Okay, thank you. There being no further questions, I now declare the polls closed on this motion and we'll proceed with the agenda. Because there is a quorum present, we have determined that it is not necessary to consider proposal eight. There is no need to adjourn the meeting. So that concludes the business items of this meeting. If you have a ballot to be submitted, please raise your hand and the inspectors will collect it. I will say that after the meeting adjourns, uh, I and some of the other senior officers will stay and are willing to address any other questions that shareholders have who are attending this meeting. Kevin, I understand that there is in fact a preliminary report of the inspector of elections, uh, inspectors of, of the election and that it is ready to be unveiled. Will you please announce the results of the stockholder vote? Thank you, Adam. The preliminary reporting of the inspectors of election indicates that 
Proposal 1 to amend the Certificate of Incorporation to declassify the board and make certain other immaterial changes has failed. Ms. Clark and Ms. Putnam have been elected as directors. Proposal 3 to amend the certi Certificate of Incorporation to eliminate that prohibition against stockholders acting by written consent has failed. Proposal 4 to amend the Certificate of Incorporation to remove the limitation on stockholders ability to call special meetings has failed. Proposal five to amend the certificate of incorporation to expand the exculpation provision to limit the liability of certain officers has failed. The appointment of Ernst and Young LLP as the company's independent public accounting firm for 2023 has been ratified. The non-binding advisory vote to approve the compensation of the company's named executive officers as disclosed in the proxy statement has failed to obtain the support of a majority of shares present and eligible to vote. Thank you, Kevin. I would point out that on many of these motions that failed, they failed primarily because of the low number of shares that are voting. And in future shareholder meetings, I would encourage all of our shareholders to actually cast their vote. The right to vote is one of the most precious acts that we have in the United States. And giving up your right to vote uh, is painful and has consequences. On behalf of the company, again, I would like to thank all of those shareholders who did vote for their participation in this meeting. And to all of our shareholders, whether you voted or not, for your ongoing support of AMC. I hereby request that the final report of the inspector's election be filed with the minutes of this meeting. That completes the business of the meeting, although we will take additional questions from shareholders after the meeting adjourns. Uh, a, a motion to adjourn is now in order. John Merriweather, a stockholder, I move that this meeting be adjourned. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Lisa Morris, a shareholder, I second the motion. All in favor of the motion to adjourn, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please signify by saying no. Are there any abstentions? The motion has been carried. I hereby declare this meeting adjourned and will stay online for those of you who might have questions to ask. Thank you for joining us today. That concludes the formal shareholder meeting. Are there shareholders here that have questions to pose of Adam? Thank you. I can't hear you. You'll need to get the mic closer to you. I think I muted it. There you, you go. Man. Absolutely. Right. My name is Corey Seaman. I am a shareholder. Um, I'm 401 Doge on X, if you if you find me there, Aaron, or Adam Aaron. Um, but basically, last time we spoke, I was here at a shareholder meeting, June 2022. And at that meeting, I expressed concern with the price manipulation of AMC stock. Those, those remain, but I just want to say thank you for taking action as far as following up with FINRA, following up with the New York Stock Exchange on the failures to deliver, which were rampant this year. And thank you for continuing the operations the way that you have, right? We've expanded the revenue streams, uh, the credit card, it's the only one I use, um, you know, the popcorn, uh, vertical integration, along with the distribution and the partnerships we're doing there. So I'm thankful for everything that you're doing. Uh, what I would ask, my question, is that we look for uh, so with my price concerns, I believe that's a custodial issue. And as Gary Gensler would say, except I would say for the stock market, it's rife with fraud and manipulation. And whatever the case is happening there, I think it's healthy for our company to explore additional um, ways to raise capital. So in the current system, what, I, what the crux is, I want to give my money to the company, right? And I want to participate in the operations and the revenue generated thereof. But what's actually happening is the market is setting our price, not you, it's not your fault. And when they do that and they know that we're going to raise money, for some reason it goes down to rock bottom levels. 
and then you issue those securities to Goldman Sachs or Citibank. And those go to uh, brokerages, and I have to give my money to brokerages to participate. And the reality is I don't want to. I've given them $170,000 so far. It's currently worth $45,000. i am happy as the next person to buy the dip, love buying the dip. But what I don't like is that you are not actually getting my money. And I'm not participating because, as we know, the stock price is not necessarily reflective of the operations. You guys are increasing revenues. Operations are continuing to go up, and we see the stock price is down like 90% on the year. I don't know. It's insane. So all I'm saying is there's other options, and I would appreciate if we explore them. So one, and I'm not saying this is the solution. For instance, blockchain technology, that is a public, un- immutable ledger, right? And right now you can register security there. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff going on with token and tokenized stocks, and and apes are going to have an uproar about it. But the reality is that's a custody problem as well. I think that FTX thing should be a public hearing. But either way, you can create a smart contract that says we're going to offer you X, and we're going to use it for this project, and you can raise those funds. And we could go wallet to wallet or whatever, find a custodian that you trust, that we all trust. We can fix those. But if we wait for the public market to fix it, Shit, we've been waiting, Adam, right? Like it could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And I appreciate everybody that's helping out, right? Dave Lauer and, and people that are coming out with lit exchange, yada, yada, yada. But what I'm saying is if we explore additional capital raising opportunities, at least the market has to recognize that and can't guarantee the price drops when they know we have to raise funds from them. So I know that's a, that's a bit much, but I'm, I'm well, just expressing that concern. So, well, there was a lot in there, but it's number one. I want to thank you for coming to Kansas City for the meeting, as, as you did for the last one. Uh, I was listening carefully to what you had to say, and we will continue to explore as many creative options as we can for the betterment of all shareholders. If you look at what separates AMC uh, uh, from uh, Others of our competitors, Regal, which went into bankruptcy, big chain, Alamo and Arclight, small chains, it's went into bankruptcy. It, it has been our creativity and our willingness to explore all options that has been the reason for our success. So uh, I continue to listen to you, and I, we, we will continue to explore all options. I, I, I share your pain as a shoulder. I am the largest individual retail shareholder at AMC. So our interests are completely aligned. Uh, if, if you benefit from share appreciation, so do I. If your shares go down in value, so do mine. And I have a lot of them. So we are uh, uh, totally focused on what we can do to drive success with this company going forward to increase shareholder value over the long term. And again, thank you for your comments and thank you for your support. Yes, Susan. Thank you. I don't mean to monopolize the room, but I do have some some questions and some concerns. Um, So now that the, the reverse split and conversion have gone through, I'm wondering if you will consider changing your mind on the issue of hiring share Intel to do a share count um, and not only have it uh, a share count of what exists now, but backward looking for about five years. Would you consider doing that? We have considered doing that. Uh, And I will tell you that uh, many of our shoulders don't want to believe it, but we issue a share count every 90 days. And we did so again today. We said there are 198 million shares that are outstanding. Um, we've looked at the services that Share Intel provides. We know that out there on in the world of Twitter, uh, it's perceived to be some magic bullet that will answer all questions and solve all problems. We've looked hard at it. We we don't think that there's any actionable intelligence that will come our way if we engage them uh, to advise us. Other questions? Christy Harris, shareholder. Hi, Christy. Hi, how are you doing? All good. So I'm wondering if there is any comment on what appears to be 
very limited or no insider buying of our stock currently. Sure. Um, I myself have bought millions of dollars worth of AMC stock over the years in the eight years that I've run the company. Um, if you look at the last couple of years, uh, there has not been significant insider buying. Uh, those are all individual investment decisions made by individuals about whether they think they have the right amount of AMC shares or not, whether they should have more or less. In my own case, a significant portion of my net worth is in AMC stock. Uh, I've said publicly that I have no intention of selling any of that stock uh, anytime soon. I have not sold a single share since January of 2022. So I'm a holder. Um, uh, but I honestly, with res as I look at diversifying my assets, I think I have the right amount of of my own net worth invested in AMC stock. So I'm not currently a seller, but I'm also not a buyer. I think about it all the time. Uh, I think about all the time whether I should buy uh, or not. Uh, but I think I'm properly invested and properly diversified. As for others, those are all individual decisions that they make one by one by one. There is no concerted effort in our company to encourage officers to buy, to hold, or to sell stock other than the requirements that we put in as a company about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, we didn't have any policy on whether executive officers should hold stock, and we thought it was a good idea to do so. So in my own case, I'm required to hold eight times my annual salary in AMC stock. Uh, executive vice presidents are required to hold four times their salary. Senior vice presidents are required to hold two times their salary in AMC stock, subject to all the particularities of the policy and the plan. Thank you, Christy. Any other questions? I believe we have one at the rear. Adam, how you doing? Robert here. Um, so before the reverse bit, uh, conversion that we had, um, filter to deliverers were through the roof. Um, cost of borrow was maxed out in the thousands and um, FTDs were running rapid. Um, then the reverse split conversion happened. Now the short interest is down to two, three, four, five percent. And um, now there's as many as three million, ten million shares available to borrow. Do you have any do you have anybody on your team that's looking into um, why that is? Or maybe even if anything going on with the EFTX situation, uh, with the tokenized AMC um, shares um, one for one, back one for one may have been the root of the problem. Do you have anybody investigating FTX and uh, the backed tokens there? So uh, there's one fact in your statement that was incorrect. Uh, the short interest is not 2 or 3%. It's, it has come down from where it was previously, but it's nowhere close to 2 or 3%. It's many multiples of that currently. And we look at that literally as every single short interest report is issued. Uh, every two weeks. Um, uh, I think the, um, the FTX matter has been dealt with not by AMC, but by the federal courts. Uh, and as you know, uh, uh, its CEO and several of its senior officers were just convicted of securities fraud. The, uh, beyond that, on this whole question of uh, fails to deliver and other matters. Uh, we have said repeatedly that we have gone to FINRA and we have gone to the New York Stock Exchange and we have reported our concerns and we've reported them to the highest levels. Uh, I know that the literally the head of the New York Stock Exchange was aware of uh, our approaches because I heard back from her 
Uh, and uh, you know, we are we are a company on the exchange. We're not the exchange itself. Uh, uh, our business is to sell movie theater tickets and popcorn and soda and all sorts of other things. And now with Taylor Swift and Beyonce, it's to create uh, movie content or at least concert content to be distributed globally. But the regulation of the stock markets is the job of the U.S. government uh, and the U.S. stock exchange. It's not the job of AMC. So while we watch it closely and we report what we think needs to be reported, uh, it's their responsibility to police the markets. Uh, it's our responsibility to run the company right. Thank you for answering that question. And just to follow up, Adam, um, did you happen to um, have anybody on the team look at the um, tokenized AMC shares? And if so, who? So we can do a follow-up. Uh, yeah, I, I'd rather not get into the details of it uh, because I, I fear that that's just going to spark a whole new genre of conspiracy theories, uh, theories floating around on Twitter. Uh, uh, of course, we looked at it. Uh, and uh, as I said, when we have concerns, we report them to the regulators. Uh, beyond that, I think it's better for our shareholders and for the company management to focus on how can we run the company better? How can we deliver earnings? Uh, how can we innovate? And to that end, there's another event happening today at uh, a little after four o'clock Eastern time, uh, we'll be reporting our third quarter earnings. And a little after four o'clock central time, we're going to be holding a conference call that any shareholder is uh, uh, able to sign into and listen into on a simultaneous uh, webcast. And I would encourage all of our shareholders to read our earnings report today and listen to the earnings call, because on that call, we will address a lot of the things that the company is doing to, in fact, deliver earnings both now and into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I guess that concludes yeah. our time together, yes? Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Great. We are adjourned. Thank you.